Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. So today I'm actually going to be painting the Iron Maiden Expansion Pack 2. So every single miniature in here is going to be painted in this video. There's going to be some uh, timestamps for you to look in the description if you want to move on to the next mini. Or if you want to go back and forth between minis and see where I'm at. Instead of doing one video per mini, I've decided to do one long video. And we're going to be doing it all with a Zenithal highlight. Even though I was going to try a new Zenithal highlight with some, uh, I think it was moon dust or something like that. Or some very light yellow color. Anyways, I didn't clean up my hairbrush enough. The white was still in it and it came out that didn't even do any so i'm not even going to show you that recording uh and the minis that are going to be in there are popping up right now so anyways if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button hit that like button and now let's get painting Alright, so let's get painting these Iron Maiden Pack 2 expansions here. And uh, they were Zenithal Prime, like I mentioned before. And what I did do is try to do three of them with white uh, as a Zenithal, and then three of them with a yellowish Zenithal to try and see if it made a difference having a different color for your Zenithal highlight. However, like I mentioned also, I didn't wash my airbrush properly. Some of the white stayed in there. So as I was priming with the uh, or Zenithal highlighting, most of them came out with the white first and then the yellow came out a little later on the last one, which was uh, Asylum Eddie. So you'll see that he's a little bit more yellow. Now we're gonna go through every single miniature of the six of them in here in this video, so it will be a little bit longer. And feel free to skip ahead and take a look at whichever miniature you wanna see painted. There's no special technique that I use here at all. All I did was paint the miniatures with a Zenithal highlight. I do have to say though that I'm loving Zenithal Highlight if I really concentrate on where the lighting is coming from. And a lot of times you say the lighting is coming from above, I'm trying it where the lighting is coming from a certain angle of the miniature. So I will actually point my light at the miniature and give it a very, very bright highlight there with the white or whatever color I'm using. Now in the future I do want to try uh, having a different uh, primer. So I'm actually trying to see if I can use some dark red or dark blue or dark green and then use a Zenithal of a light blue, light green, light red, etc. Just to try and see if we can get a different look, especially with speed paints. I know the colors are going to come out completely different than what you expect. So, but what does that do, right? And does it give it a bad look? Will it be horrible? Um, cause I have tried the slap chop technique on top of a, um, I think it was a uh, Makragi blue or ultra, no Makragi blue. And then I did also try it on chaotic red from army painter and the colors weren't great, but I never show those on here. I've just been painting. That's part of my conquest army, uh, that I haven't been showing much on here. I know I used to be really big into conquest. I've slacked off quite a bit on that. Um, anyway, so. Um, yeah. And while I'm painting, uh, this is Bounty Hunter Eddie, by the way. Uh, he's kind of similar to Cyborg Eddie. I think what they did is like they rehashed some of the other ones and just brought them back into different versions of uh, like this Cyborg Eddie. They made him like an old west one. You can use this guy in Invader and you can use this guy in, uh, Zombicide Undead or Alive as well. Uh, what do you think of these expansion packs that Simon comes out with? They came out with, or they're coming out with, or they pre-order right now, a Monty Python one, which I, I mean, if you're a fan of Monty Python, great, but I don't see how it fits into the theme of Zombicide and so on and so forth. However, a uh, theme like this one, which is cool because it's for many different games. And then they came out with one last year, uh, the, or I think it might be out now. I don't Well, it's out in stores. I know that the, the boys. So the soups and the guys that are trying to type the soups are in two different packs as well. You can pick those up, but there's only for Zombicide 2.0. You can only use them in that one. Uh, so what do you guys think of these kind of expansions that are focused on a brand or a personality or so on and so forth? Uh, I'd like to know in the comments what you guys think of them. Do you think it's just like another money grab or is it actually something that's pretty cool? Uh, should they have been part of the original Kickstarter and stuff like that? Or do you think they came up with it afterwards? 
Anyway, so now we're doing bassist Eddie here, and which is fun. I'm using a color that I don't use very often, which is Battleship Gray. And I use it for his skin, because in the artwork, he has very bluish, ghoulish skin. And I was like, let's give this one a try. And it almost gives it almost like an ice feeling to it as well. Like I could see Battleship uh, Gray uh, being used uh, for ice, frankly. You know, like it would be actually a good speed paint for that. But this, with this guy had his skin, I think it works out perfectly well on that. So I'm not going to go through every single paint and talk to you how it applies and all that. You guys are know how speed paints work now. This is just a video uh, where I'm going to talk about painting miniatures in general. Why uh, I love painting miniatures. Well, it's, it's a great relaxing pastime. It's a great hobby. And I'm hoping that you guys are learning from me as well and seeing different techniques. Now, like I said, I really love the Zenithal highlight. I don't know many other techniques. There is one that I will be trying on Cinderman Eddie, I think that's his name, the one that's in pack three, the big fire guy. I, well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it on that yet. I'm not, I don't 100%. It's called the Smash Chop. I know if you guys heard this from Ninjon, he recently posted a video on it, and I'm tempted to give it a shot to see if a person like me can actually create uh, a miniature, paint a miniature based on that Smash Chop, Smash Chop technique. And I'm not sure the cinder guy is a good idea. I may be, but I'm gonna have to take a look and see how again that works out because it works with different layers of paint on like from bottom to top of bright colors and you don't speed paint, you don't slap chop, you just smash paint onto it. And then you sort of like layer your paint after. So I don't know what that is. If you guys have heard of it, have you guys done it? Uh, if you wanna put links to other videos where people have smash chopped, uh, in the comments, I will take a look at those videos and I will try and replicate something like that to see if I can actually follow these steps and do something like that. Because that would be something cool to try out on the channel. I think it would be interesting. It might actually work on the Cinderman guy. I think that's his name. I, I, if I'm messing it up, I'm very sorry. Uh, I don't always look at the boxes. I don't remember all the names of these miniatures. Nor do I seem like I always remember all the names of the paints I'm using either. But as you can see, Base Eddie or what is it? Bass, bassist Eddie. It's turning out really cool. He's got some white smoke on the ground. He's got some blood red smoke on the ground. I used a little bit of um, pixie pink on top of the smoke once he was really dry just to highlight the smoke a bit. And I didn't do any of the uh, OSL for all the lighting effects that these guys had. If you look at the artwork on Simon's page, uh, and I, th I don't remember the name. I think it's his big child uh, painting or something like that that actually painted these. And I try to stay as close as possible to that artwork. I really love what they did, but I didn't do all the, the lighting effects where they have like a blue light shining on the mummy and stuff like that, or um, some pink and purple lighting up a basis Eddie. I didn't do that because sometimes when you're trying to do OSL, you end up ruining your miniature instead of actually making it look better. And I liked the way these miniatures were turning out. I didn't want to mess those up. Maybe one day I will be a little bit more adventurous and try that as well. This is what the point of this channel is, uh, is to be adventurous and do that. Now, uh, just as a side note as well, if you are a follower of the channel, if you know Bootsik FDB, if you are in the area, I do give paint courses in uh, the store on Monday nights right now. I don't know if the dates are going to change because it hasn't seen very much popularity. Uh, go check out their Facebook page of Bootsik FDB and take a look for the, the pinned post. Uh, up there I have an email address or that you can contact uh, if you're interested in joining in the painting courses. Or I just show you the basic stuff and some advanced techniques that I know and that I don't necessarily do but that I know how to teach it. So if you guys are into painting miniatures and you haven't started and you want to learn, come take a look at Butsik FDB on Monday nights. Uh, if you're close to the area anyways, if you are nowhere near this place, well then I'm sorry. Uh, but if you'd like to see maybe some live painting videos, like some tutorials, maybe I could start doing that as well on a certain night of the week. So if that's an interest to you, again, uh, comment below. I love seeing comments. I love reading your comments. I love replying to your comments. It is always grateful. Even if it's a bad comment, I don't care. And there you go, Shaman Eddie now painted and ready. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job with Shaman Eddie. The next one here is Asylum Eddie. He's going to be very simple to paint. Uh, I went a little dark on the colors on him because frankly he had so much lighting going on him in the artwork. But I figured, you know what, he's been in this straight jacket for a long time. It's it's probably gotten really dirty. The floor is pretty grimy and dirty. I'm going to be doing this. I mean, even though it's cushioned, it's not the most 
lovely place to be, right? When you're in an asylum. I, I don't know. I haven't been there. I don't want to ever be there. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll just go completely nuts by painting miniatures all the time. Uh, is that what happens? I don't know. Anyways, um, again, back to... Yeah, so, uh, you know, comment below. and Hit the like button, guys. Really hit that like button. Uh, if you like these videos, you like hearing my voice this long. Because I know this is a longer video. And yeah, I am talking throughout all of it because sometimes when you're painting miniatures it's it's not always about the painting it's also about the social aspect and uh, getting together and painting with your buddies or whatever that could be fun too and all that and so I want to be your buddy while you're painting so you could have this playing in the background while you're painting your miniature or following along these uh, guides and you have my wonderful voice in the background saying hey you can do this you got this you uh you don't have to worry about it being perfect i don't worry for, about it being perfect i want it to be on the table i want it to look good for the table i don't want it to look good in a display case because that's not where they're going to go they're going to be played on a table and used by all my friends hopefully and enjoyed by them as well so again if you're painting up uh individual miniatures it's a lot of fun because you get a lot of variety when you're painting up a batch of miniatures uh, you sometimes can get lost in the boredom of it so that's why I did do a video recently where you can change the look of those batch paintings just with a shade or a tone or a wash beforehand uh, just an undercoating beforehand heck you could probably even use a speed paint as an undercoating uh, for some of your tones and then just do some layering on top of it after and I bet you would come out looking amazing so in this individual case here where we have six miniatures in one pack yeah, it takes a lot longer. I mean, each some of them took only maybe 10-15 minutes to paint. Others took uh, maybe 30 minutes to paint. But it's still faster than 4-5 to five hours on these miniatures. Especially this uh, mummy uh, Eddie here. He's pretty cool and very simple. He had uh, white wrapping. So that's why I went with the holy white here. It's got a hint of gray. Whereas Ashen Stone is a little bit more gray. And Blinding Light would have been too white. Which uh, you saw me use Blinding Light a while ago there on uh, Basis Eddie's hair. Uh, I will be using it again after. Uh, and you saw here, I put a tone on the base here first just to give it a brown hint because with the yellow I'm putting on now, I just realized how yellow it was while I was painting it. But I'm like, okay, but it was still wet, the tone. So I tried to wet blend it all together and it made, I should have technically mixed the soft tone into the ancient honey. I think that would have given the look I really wanted for the uh, these uh, like Egyptian ruins here. I think that would have been a lot better. All right, so we're done painting another one here and uh, we're getting through this. I think we're about, uh, what, four of them done? I think, something like that. Yeah, no, I don't know. This may be the last one. I have no idea. I don't remember anymore half the time. Anyways, this is Killer Eddie. Uh, and he's got an arm on the ground here, which is interesting. I didn't notice that until I started painting. I'm like, oh, here's an arm, a severed arm on the ground. So, and I noticed on his axe, he had some blood in the artwork. So I'm like, all right, I got to make this one a little bit gruesome at the end. Add a little bit of blood to the axe. Add a little bit of blood to that arm on the ground. And uh, these, but these miniatures, again, I'm so happy that Simon puts basing on their miniatures now. It makes such a difference in having just flat, boring bases uh, because then you're working with the theme of them, right? And they usually mix in their theme into what their game is or whatever they're trying to do here. And if you're using like one of these miniatures in any of the Simon games, which is Ankh, Zombie Side, Cthulhu, Rising Sun, uh, and all the zombie sides. I'm talking about like many, like not just one of them. You can use it in Black Plague, Green Horde. You can use it in Zombie Side 2.0. You can use it in Zombie Side Invader, Zombie Side Undead or Alive. It gives you a whole bunch of cards for these miniatures. Not everyone is on all of them, but you can have a lot of fun figuring out which one you want to do. Even Massive Darkness, I forgot about that. Massive Darkness 2, some of these miniatures can be used in there. So that is really awesome what they've done with this. And I find at least having the nice bases that you get to paint you don't have to worry about doing too much to them, not having to base them and all that. And yes, this is the last miniature in the pack. So we're almost at the end. I Again, you guys are amazing if you watched through this whole video. I hope you did. I hope you learned something anyways and that you see what a Zenithal highlight can do. And again, you see this one. I went from the light from a different angle. I actually went from the right side of this miniature more. Or did I? I think so. Well, from the... I don't remember. But you can see that in the different Zenithals, I did different lighting. And look, just look at how the effect is on these miniatures. And there you have it, folks. The second pack in this expansion for Iron Maiden from Simon Games, all painted, ready for the table. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.